So small input to the steering wheel, and as soon as I put some steering in, I start chasing it a little bit and just in relation to the trailer. Hey, welcome back to Team O'Neill. My name is Max. Today we're going to work on some basic towing skills. I'm going to show you how to back up to and hook onto your trailer, and then I'm going to show you how to back your trailer up into your spot. All right, so we're in our vehicle. We're getting ready to back up to our trailer. I'd say for the most part, a lot of vehicles out there have uh, backup cameras. But today we're going to try to do everything we can without using that backup camera. Do it in the old school way, using your mirrors. Because you never know if your camera is going to fail or you get in an older vehicle that just simply doesn't have a backup camera. So first things first, I know that my ball on my truck is going to match the trailer. So that's probably one of the more important things first. Make sure most of the car haulers are going to be a 2 and 5 16 ball and make sure that's what you have. So I'm already lined up pretty centered to my trailer already. And what I like to do is I really like to always use my mirrors the best I can. Uh, there's just so many vehicles I'll drive where that back window is just not even an option because of uh, luggage or the vehicle you have or anything like that. So I just have my head centered and I already had my mirrors lined up to see my whole trailer from down to the tires to the top, which is just gonna be the top of my ramps right now. And I just look to see that I have kind of even spacing on either side of the trailer backing up. And just start rolling back, tiny little adjustments maybe to get straightened up. And I'm gonna get to a point where I think I'm close enough. And then I'm gonna stop, I jump out, and I get a little reference point uh, how far away the ball is and basically if I get out of my vehicle and look and we'll say my ball is I don't know a foot and a half away from my hitch then what I'm gonna do is look at the ground and try to find either two rocks or two points that's about that same gap and then I usually try to get that on the bottom part of my mirror and I can get a good look at how far back I rolled with just looking at the ground. So sometimes when I'm backing up, I'm just looking at the ground at my two points. That's gonna kind of equally represent how far away the ball is uh, from my truck. So we'll keep going. I'm gonna keep actually looking at my mirrors. I get centered up a little better. Pull ahead a little bit. And let me jump out and check and see where we're at. So when I got out of my vehicle to check, I was a little off to the right of, of the hitch with my trailer ball. So the ball in the truck was too far to the right of the hitch. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to get forward and set the vehicle over and doing that off to the left or right too far or too much, uh, I am going to Again, ball needs to move to the left. So I'm going to turn all the way to the right. I'm going to pull my vehicle ahead. And then just by pulling ahead by the car vehicle turning, the rear end is going to shift over to the left just a little bit. And then I can get myself lined up. So here's another little tip for you. I'm putting my vehicle in reverse and I'm going to back up just the tiniest little bit. Again, I kind of look off to the side to judge how far back I went. So we've all done this before, right? We've had our vehicle in reverse. Everything was lined up just perfect. We put the vehicle in the park and the vehicle rolled back on you and got offline with the ball. So what I like to do, since I just had my vehicle in reverse, I'm going to put my transmission in drive, feel that it shifted, then go back to park. And that's going to minimize or 
eliminate the amount of rollback your vehicle will have because that transmission just got set in drive a little bit. So it's kind of like neutral when I let off the brake. You'll just minimize that rollback that is uh, always painful. You always thought you had it just perfect. You let off the brake and that thing rolled back and parked. So let's go back there and see what we got. So this is just what I'm looking for with my trailer ball. As I lower down on, you can see that my coupler is back just a little bit. And when I lower my trailer on, I like it to slide up on the ball. So the problem that you'll have is if you try going perfectly straight up and down, you have the ability or possibility of uh, grabbing the actual uh, tongue lock in there and pushing it up in and not letting the ball to fully slide down onto the coupler. So I always like doing that. And then right when I get my jack off the ground just a little bit, I'll then check to make sure that my coupler lock is moving freely. If I, if I pulled that pin and that coupler lock is stuck up, then you probably have this trailer ball is jammed up to the coupler lock itself, which rides up and down here. So uh, that got down with no force. Your holes should line up. If you have to slam it down, you either have some frozen components or you're just not lined up enough. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is hook up my chains. And vehicles and trailers, sometimes you have to cut, put new chains on to match your truck uh, versus the drop and everything. Uh, this trailer is, the chains are long enough to where I don't have to twist them to tighten them. And what I wanna do is try to cross my chains to make a little bit of a basket if my trailer were to fall off. So you just give a little cross like that and that's just an extra little thing so your coupler doesn't go down through your chains and hit the pavement. This kind of helps catch a little bit. Uh, the next thing we're gonna hook up is our breakaway switch. When this cable tightens up, it pulls the post out of the uh, breakaway switch. Two pieces of metal come together and it locks your brakes up if you were to come disconnected. With the chains and your uh, tow plug, make sure you have enough slack so if you did have to go to that almost 90 degree angle to your trailer, that's not gonna tighten up and pull it out or bend any terminals or cause any damage to your vehicle or the hitch and wiring. You got a seven way, make sure it's seated in all the way. So I'm making sure my seven way plug in is in, is in all the way and one way to know that is this little lock here it, your plug will clear the lock and you can let it up in nicely and then finally make sure your jack is up all the way and if you had a jack that pivots pivot it I've, I've replaced a lot of damaged uh, trailer jacks just because they weren't up all the way and when your vehicle dips that will hit and bend All right, so we just drove for hours. We made it to the racetrack. Uh, we need to now back our trailer up into our spot. So some things to remember, if I want the rear of my trailer to go to the right, I'm actually gonna turn to the left. And then I also, same thing in the other direction, rear of the trailer to go left, I turn right, and really small inputs. I also really like to uh, brake with my left foot, especially with this, because Maybe I need to get into a little gas and I don't want to be stabby and back and forth, back and forth with one foot. So I really like braking with my left foot here for a nice ease transition from brake to throttle or back to throttle to brake. So uh, I do have the advantage of my back window being open. So I am going to just give a little spot at my cones. I'm going to lean way forward and try to pick up my cones in the rear mirror. And I have kind of a little bit of an idea the arc I need to make. So small input to the steering wheel, and as soon as I put some steering in, I start chasing it a little bit and just in relation to the trailer. So if the trailer turns sharp, I immediately start chasing it. And we get on to a little bit of a straightaway. Still using that rear window a little bit. And then now I got my cones lined up so I can just trust my mirrors. Turn in a little, take out a little steering. Still at a good arc. 
Uh, I can turn my trailer again and then chase it immediately. Nice small steps. Don't rush yourself. This is no high speed thing. You're just taking your time, making sure you're not getting into anybody else's race haulers. <clears throat> With this trailer, it's an open trailer, so I only really need to keep an eye on my fenders uh, and marker lights. But maybe if you had a tall car hauler, you have to keep looking at the upper corner of your trailer to make sure you're not getting into any low wires or tree branches or anything else sticking out. Every time I put some steering in, I immediately start chasing it. So we're back into our spot. If you can, try to back up nice and straight and park nice and straight. It just makes loading and unloading that much easier. And uh, most important, uh, before I hooked up to my trailer today, our car was already on the trailer. But when you go to unload or load your car on the trailer, make sure your trailer is hooked to your truck because that tongue will jump up immediately as soon as those front wheels get on your ramps. So no matter what you have for a car hauler, uh, just have that thing hooked to a truck when you're loading or unloading a car. Okay, so there's a brief introduction to uh, hooking up to your trailer and backing it up. Uh, for sure, we could get a little more intricate in certain parts. So if that's something you'd like to see, whether it's backing up, hooking up, or anything like that, just let us know in the comments section. Uh, we hope you learned something today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Hey, this is Chris Sear, CEO and partner at Team O'Neill. Thank you so much for visiting our channel. If you want to join our community, please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about us or book a course, please visit teamoneal.com. We look forward to connecting with you.